Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be painting this elf bandit from Ve Victus Miniatures. This was actually part of their December Patreon, which was bandit themed. It came with a lot of great bandits. Uh, this here is the female elf bandit who is modular and came with a variety of weapons. I've printed her on my Ender 3 version 2 using eSun PLA Plus. I actually used the CHEP profile for this, which I'll link below. I found the Fat Dragon profile wasn't printing very well uh, with the legs far apart like this. It would actually wobble too much on the bed and fail quite often. Whereas the CHEP profile, with its very much overboard supports, ended up printing very nicely. So I've printed her out. This is at quite a large layer height, so you might see some layer lines, but for a little bandit level one encounter, I'm not going to worry too much. I'm going to be painting her in a sort of bright red color scheme for two reasons. First of all, I want to be able to use her as a red brand bandit, which commonly wear red hoods or red bandanas. So that bandana over there will definitely be painted red. Secondly, as a first encounter for some people that I haven't played D&D before that I'll be running, they, I want them to see a clear distinction on the tabletop. So the very first encounter, all of the bandits will be painted bright red and the ally is going to be a half orc, so bright green, clearly distinguishable from across the table whose ally, whose enemy. Uh, without further ado though, I will get started. I'm going to list all the paints in the description below. I've got a few different ones here. You don't have to go this overboard with an NPC. Uh, normally I wouldn't, especially for a low level enemy. However, these Ve Victus miniatures have a lot of detail. You'll see as we go along, but the little, I'd say, skirt there is actually made of various different pieces stitched together. And you can see those stitches there, as well as she actually has multiple layers going on. There's an undershirt, there's an overvest, there's the fur, and there's the padded armor. So there is quite a bit to go with here, and I've got quite a few paints here just to bring out all these various layers. So without further ado, let's get started. First up, I'm using Bugman's Glow from Citadel. Off camera, I've given it a very good shake, put it on my palette and watered it down. And now I'm just gonna get started with just blocking in all of the skin areas. It's worth keeping in mind when you print this miniature, if you if you support Ve Victus and get it from them, they will come quite modularly. The hands will be printed separately, as well as you'll get two different options for this miniature, and in fact, most of the bandit miniatures in the December Patreon. And that is you can print them with or without this mask on. I, I chose with the mask on just because I want them to be more sort of faceless enemies. I don't want the characters to get too attached to the bandits they're going to be killing at level one. So I printed her with the mask covering her face. However, if you wanted, you could print her with the mask down. There is actually a lot of facial details on these Ve Victus miniatures. The reason for that is, first of all, they're very well modeled. Secondly, they use heroic scale, which means that compared to full-size humans, they're slightly out of scale. The hands and the face are slightly larger than they should be. The reason for this is to show the detail a lot better from a tabletop. It also gives it a very nice stylized look. And I'm a really big fan of this. If you compare this to one of the Nolzer's miniatures, the sort of official Dungeons and Dragons line miniatures, they will look a bit out of place. Uh, but I actually prefer this, and going forward, I'm going to going to stick 
to these heroic scale miniatures. Another thing to keep in mind though with Ve Victor's miniatures is they are printed slightly bigger than regular medium humanoids. So it's still the same size base, however she is slightly larger than an average human mini would be. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, you could scale it down on the printer, or just like I am doing here, leaving it as is. If she's slightly taller than the player character minis, it's not the end of the world, it's just there for reference. Okay, the Bugman's Glow is applied, it's drying nicely there. Next up, we're going to move on to some Xandri dust. I've got my Xandri dust on my palette, and now we're going to get going one of the lowest layers, and that is this sort of undershirt. We've got the camera will focus. This undershirt we've got below this vest. So there's a few places you must keep in mind. One is there. Oops. Bit too much paint on the brush. Let's just wipe some off. It's this, sticks out here by the chest, as well as if you go around you'll see that the vest sort of ends there, so make sure you get between the vest and the belt. And if you look on the sides here by the arms, things get a bit tricky, but the vest ends there, and then you've got these sort of, I suppose, braces, this extra bit of armor that she's wearing. So make sure you get between them there. And then if you look very carefully, you'll see, let's take a look at this side, probably it'll be a bit better. The braces have got straps on the underside. So you'll want to get between those straps. See there's one strap there, one strap there, so we'll go right there in between. And at this point in time, we're painting from the lowest level of clothing upwards. So if you go over those straps, it's really not that, that much of a big deal. We'll be painting those straps once this paint is dry, so don't worry too much about that. So we're going to go around, making sure you pick out all the places between the vest and the braces, as well as while I've got this paint out, I want to paint one other section of her clothing at the same time. So let's go down here. You'll see there's also some pants she's got there, but then there's these sort of, I suppose, garters or something on top of these pants, but below the leg armor and the boots. So by doing this, it just ties everything together quite nicely. You've got the undershirt there, and these garters over here. Is that the right word? I'm not too familiar on <laughs> fantasy dress, so if that's wrong please forgive me. But I'm going to go around, I'm going to paint those, obviously one on this leg as well. I'm going to leave the straps that hold them up, I'll paint those in the same color as the belt a bit later, but make sure you go around get everywhere between these pieces of armor and like I said if you get on the armor it's not the end of the world we'll paint that the Xandri dust is applied and all of those lowermost layers are done next up I've got two different color reds here I've got Mephiston red and corn red if you take a look at them there's not much of a difference if you look at them separately, but when they're close together you can tell that they're different shades. And the reason why I'm using two different reds is particularly for the skirt here made from the different torn pieces of fabric. I'm going to alternate Mephiston red and Corn red on these different pieces, as well as use them for different parts of clothing. You'll see what I mean in a second. So first up, I've got some Mephiston Red on my brush. I've actually got both of them on my palette at the moment. But this Mephiston Red, I'm going to use as my main red. So I'm going to paint her entire jacket, obviously exclude the fur, in this Mephiston Red. 
this is a super vibrant, super bright red. I actually really love this color. And it's also going to serve the purpose of being very, very visible to the players that this is red, this is danger, this is an enemy, and you are level one, so be careful. Okay, she's got some little straps, a drawstring holding her top together there, so just keep that in mind. But besides that, I'm also, as I said, going to pick out one or two sections between between all these little stitches here. So let's do that one. That goes all the way down there. Don't forget to do the inside as well. I'll do that off camera so I can get it a bit better. I'll skip that one and I'll do that one there, let's say. So those will be Mephiston red. Obviously don't forget to do the back of the jacket as well. It's quite a large piece there. That's why I don't want to do too much of the skirt in the Mephiston red. Instead, I'll swap over to my corn red. And you'll see now what I mean, whereas they look very similar there, but once you apply them next to each other, you can see, might be a bit more obvious once it dries, but you can see that there is a distinction between the different reds. So I'm going to do two things with this. One, paint in all the sections of this tattered skirt that you didn't paint them a fist in red in the corn red as well as get a bit more of my brush and very carefully paint her little bandana there that way quite clearly red but we're using two different shades and it might not be overly obvious now but a bit later on we'll use two different colors to highlight them and that might make it stand out a bit better but go along use your Mephiston red use your corn red and just grab a bunch of details to make them stand out nice and vividly to warn the players that <laughs> they must be careful The Mephiston red and the corn red are both applied and you might be thinking that looks a bit too bright right now. Don't worry, once we apply the wash a bit later that will bring down all of those colors and actually tie them together nicely. Uh, I'm really hoping that it'll make them sort of merge quite nicely in that skirt area there but we'll, we'll see in a second. I'm moving on now to some Rhinox hide and once again I'm gonna do something at the top and something at the bottom. So let's paint her hair in this Rhinox hide color. So go around, she's got quite a long ponytail there, so make sure you go all the way down. And there, as well as if I'm using some Rhinox hide there, and I've got it on my palette already, let's say we paint her, about to say underclothing, that's not the right term, these tights that she's wearing underneath there. So just get underneath there with your brush. I'm using a regiment brush from the Army Painter. It's got quite a nice long tip, so that can get in there quite nice and easily. If you wanted otherwise, you could have always painted this earlier I'm my painting a bit out of out of order just because I wanted the hair after I'd painted the top but you could always paint these tights of hers these pants earlier and then not have to worry too much but at the end of the day if you make a mistake it doesn't take too long to tidy up after yourself Let's go around, make sure you get all the hair in the Rhinox hide and the pants. I'm going to skip the knee pads and the boots, those we done at a later stage. It's literally just the pants before they meet these garters, these 
sort of straps over there. So not too much there. With that Rhinox hide applied on the hair and the under trousers, I am moving on now to some Mournfang brown. This is a much lighter brown, more of like a tanned leather. So because of that, I am going to do, you guessed it, the leather. So there's a few parts to pick out with this Mournfang brown. I'm going to pick out all of these knee pads. So obviously both sides. I'm going to pick out these, what I would be assuming are leather braces. And there's actually two layers to these braces, but I'm not going to go into that much detail. I'm going to paint the whole bracer in this color. And I'm also just going to paint the straps at the same time. I'm not going to be too concerned about that. So same goes with these straps over there. You can paint them now. You know what? I'll paint those the same as the belt, but these braces here, I'll just paint the entire thing. As well as since I've got this color on my palette, I'm going to at the same time paint this little fluffy collar of hers, this little fur that's sticking out on the top there. Just go around, paint that as well. Just be careful when you get to the hair that you don't go over it there. At the same time, since I've got this and this is a nice common color, let's paint this little satchel at the same time. It helps it stand out if it's nice and bright. So go around, pick out the braces, the little pouch, and the fur, all in this color. The Mournfang brown is applied all over. She's looking nice and colorful now. So let's darken things down a bit. I put a bit of Corvus black on my palette off camera here. But this is, this is a very, very dark gray. It's an almost black. I'm going to use that for her boots. These are nice big boots, so don't forget to go all the way up. As well as I'm going to use this for her belt. So just be very careful as you go along there. And if you wanted to, you could switch to a smaller brush. Like I said, a little small layer brush. But I'm just going to very gently pick out these little straps there. And this isn't so much to color it in, it's more just to block it out. I mean, you could paint over that with the brown underneath if you wanted to. And so just that one. And some of the other bandits, they'll have straps on both sides that are visible, but her skirt hides the other strap. So just there, go around, get both of the boots, and then don't forget the belt all the way around. Obviously being very mindful of getting between the hair and the pouch and on the other side of the hair there. So go around, block in the boots, block in the belts, and then she is nearly ready. The Corvus Black is now applied on the boots and the belt, and her outfit is done. It's all blocked in. There's only one more thing to do, and that's these weapons. And this step will change depending on what weapons you printed. I printed two daggers upright. You could print, I think there were some clubs, there were some swords and shields, an axe. There was even an option to hold, an, hold a dagger offhand, backwards. But I just printed her out like this, nice and default. So I've got on my palette two different colors here. I've got lead belcher and warplock bronze. I'm just going to use them to quickly block this in here. So the warplock war, <laughs> sorry, warplock bronze I will use just to color in the hilt of the daggers. Same with this one. They'll be identical. And then 
once you've got that sorted, I've also got some lead belcher here, just to pick the blade out, give it a nice shine. It's worth noting that I'm doing these two metallic colors last of the base colors. And the reason for that is, oops, the reason for that is you should get into the habit of changing out your water in your water pot after using metallic paint. The reason for that is when you rinse off your brush in your water pot, these metallic paints actually have little metallic flakes in them. And these flakes end up swirling around in your water pot, almost like tiny shards of glitter. And if you've dealt with glitter, you know how annoying that can be. And whatever colors you use after the metallics could potentially end up having a slight metallic sheen to them. So obviously, you want to avoid that. So once you're done with these metallic paints, don't forget to rinse out your water pots nice and thoroughly and put some clean water in. Heck, it's worth doing that quite often anyway, just to have some clean water, but especially after using metallics. It's also worth noting that printing on an FDM printer, like my Ender 3, things like these daggers with very sharp tips don't print very well. And the reason for that is you're, when you're printing a mini, you print from normally the feet, unless you angle it, up. So let's say you're printing where the belt is there. It's going to take a good few seconds to go around and around and print in that. Whereas if you're printing a dagger, that's just zoop, print done. Next layer, zoop, print done. And it doesn't really have enough time for the dagger to dry properly. And then you get almost this melted plastic look. That's why these daggers don't look very sharp. Believe me, the quality of the model is not to blame here. This is purely a printer quality issue. And I've tried a few things, not very successfully, but I added a, a new fan duct, the Satsuna one, as well as I printed both daggers together to try and alleviate that by giving a bit longer between the daggers. But this is just a problem with FDM printers. And if anybody has any alternative ways of printing these daggers or printing any small sharp weapon, please leave it in the comments below. I'm fairly new to this 3D printing of minis. So any advice would be greatly appreciated. And with that, these daggers are done. Brush a little rinse off there. And there we go, we're now done blocking out all the base colors. Now that all those paints have had some time to dry, it's time to really add some detail. We're going to do that with some washes or shades. I've actually got three here. I've got Seraphim Sepia, and that's going to be used purely for the skin tones to make them nice and warm, give them a nice little glow. We've got Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to use this basically on all the clothing, all the boots, all the fur, braces, even the hair. Being brown, I'll use Agrax Earthshade. Then finally, I've got some known oil, and this will just be for the metallics. The reason for that is it'll dull them down a bit uh, without making them dirty like it would if I used Agrax Earthshade. So I've already got some Agrax Earthshade on my palette on the side here, just to control it. I'm not watering it down, just using the palette to control how much is on my brush. And I'm just going to go around all of the clothing, all of the fur, even the little mask. Uh, and you can see right away what it's doing there. It's seeping into those crevices, it's giving lots of nice detail, and it's dulling everything down a bit. Which is what I want, because I don't want this mini to look shiny. I want it to look nice and dull, like the armor's been worn many years. 
has seen a couple of battles and just overall a bit grimy. So go along, make sure you get all of that, all the hair, all the pouches, and you'll see there how it goes in and hopefully it'll catch all those little cracks. It depends on your printer, it depends on your settings. After all, we're dealing with printed minis and not mass-produced ones like Games Workshop. Games Workshop minis, well, especially the most recent ones, have got very deep crevices and take washes very, very nicely. But these printed ones depend on your settings, but I think with these settings, it's going to look quite good. Get in there, especially by that belt. So I'm going to go along now. Agrax Earthshade, all of the clothes, a little bit of Seraphim Sepia on the skin, and then some Nuln Oil on the weapon. So just make sure it doesn't pool anywhere. If it's pooling, just grab it with your brush, move it somewhere else. Just move it around. And when that's done, washes being very watered down will take a bit longer to dry than regular paint. So I'm going to leave this to dry oof, probably about an hour, 45 minutes around then. And we'll come back and we'll see how this looks with that shade all dried. The washes have all had plenty of time to dry and the mini's looking nice and dark and grubby now. So what we're going to do now is leave those dark shades and just layer on top of them to bring out some highlights. So first of all, I've got some Cadian Flesh Tone here. I'm going to use that just to make the skin tone nice and bright. So what I'm doing is I'm going to just pick out all of the areas where the lights would hit. So top of the pointy ears, around the top of the eyebrows, cheekbones, definitely not inside the eye sockets, so avoid those eye sockets and paint around there. This will dry a bit transparent and look a bit better once it's dried, but what we're going to go for here is a very nice effect where we're going to have some shadows in the recesses and some nice bright colours on top. You'll see when I get to these fingers, very easy way is hold your brush at an angle and just gently go along the tops of the fingers and then the knuckles and the top of the hand there. That way you leave those recesses between the fingers nice and dark. Give that some time to dry. I might have put that a little bit too thick there, but we'll see once it's dry, it's going to go nice and subtle. With that Cadian Flesh Tone applied, I've now taken some Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm going to use this just to do some edge highlighting on anywhere we did Mephiston Red. So, good examples right there. The same on the other side, just pick up those raised edges, go along the edges there, make that nice and bright. Again, edge highlights only picking out the topmost area where the light would hit. So all the edges, and all the creases. Nice good example right there. That crease in the fabric where it touches. And because of the way this mini is designed with these edges nice and prominent, you can just skim your brush along and it will pick out those edges. So go along all the area of the shirt, where we did that with fist in red, as well as, I get a bit more of my brush there, anywhere here that we did the fist in red. So, did that section. I'm not going to really go too far in where those, those stitches are, but just a little bit there, just to give the illusion of the edge. Same with this one here. This one's actually raised, so that one I'm going to go all the way along. But when I get to the stitches, just in the corner, what you can do is actually just gently actually pick out those stitches. Yeah, that actually looks quite nice. So go along, pick up those stitches gently there. 
So make sure you get all the edges where you did the fist in red with the Evil Sons Scarlet. Similarly, once you've done that with the Evil Sun Scarlet, you're going to get yourself some West Decker Red. And I'm just going to go along anywhere that I used the Corn Red earlier. So over there, you'll see that actually shows that that piece is darker. So along there, the edge over there. As well as once you're done with the skirt, don't forget we've done in this scenario the mask with this. I'm going to pick out the ridge of the mask there and along the edge of the mask. The light will hit quite nicely on the face here, so you won't put a lot of effort into the face. Now that we're done with the reds, I'm going to move on to some Gawthor Brown. And that's just going to be to pick out all of this brown leather detail. So definitely get the edges up there. You'll see this is a nice gradual increase in color, this Gawthor Brown on top of the Mournfang Brown. It's designed to be just one shade lighter. It really picks those out nicely. Similarly over here on the braces, on the little pack there, all along the edges. You can cut in the whole top part if you want. And then I'm actually going to wipe a bit more of my brush. I've got very little on my brush now. Same color, just skimming along the top, little flecks on the fur, just to give the illusion of almost like dappled patterns on the fur. Normally with the Games Workshop Mini I would dry brush fur, but as I mentioned earlier I am a bit more cognizant of the fact that printed minis don't have as sharp edges, especially since I'm printing with a 0.4mm nozzle instead of a 0.2. So I'm not going to try and dry brush there. I think I'd rather it would actually pick up the imperfections instead of the actual detail of a try to dry brush. But just go along, make sure you get all of the edges where you used the Mournfang Brown with this Gawthor Brown. With the brown done, I've now got a tiny bit of a shakti bone and I'm really just going to use this to pick out just over there with the drawstring on the top and a little bit on the collar. This looks quite vibrant and bright now, but it will dull down as it dries. I now have a small amount of Eschen Grey on my brush. I'm just going to use that to pick out the boots. Normally I wouldn't put too much detail on something as minor and low down as the boots in the mini, but with painting black you can't really go that dark with the wash, so your only other option then is to lighten it up with highlights if you want to give it some nice depth. So go along, pick out just the ridges like that, get those edges where all the folds in the boots are. You can also, if you're feeling brave, skim along the top of the belt very, very gently there. Just that edge of the belt. And with that done, I've got a tiny bit of Bane Blade Brown that I'm just going to use to pick out some strands of hair on top of the Rhinox hide. So quite a stark contrast. Ooh, a bit too much there. Maybe you get too much, just quickly rinse off your brush. With nothing but water in your brush, just grab it and Sort of dab it off. There we go. And that sort of corrects any mistakes you made there. But effectively, I want just a tiny bit of this bane blade brown in a few 
of the highlights over here. Yeah, that's actually nice and watered down now. And just pick out a few points here and there on the hair. And with that Bane Blade Brown applied and dried, she is done. I'm going to leave her here. And she is now ready to be placed on my battle grid for the fight in the Yawning Portal. If you have any comments or suggestions about how I can improve this channel or anything you'd like to see, pop them in the comments below. I'm just starting out, so any help is greatly appreciated. Until next time, happy painting, and I'll see you soon.